hat da. My pleasure to introduce you to Paul Chater's family, those of whom we were able to collect together to enjoy this event with us in Hong Kong. Sadly, we were not able to find all the relatives, but the few that are here, we have to thank Liz for having fed it to them out from Canada, England, and Australia. And there are some in Hong Kong as well, and we have the pleasure of their company this morning. This meeting today is for you to know each other, to exchange your phone numbers, your addresses, your emails, so that you will be able to be in contact with one another from here on, and more importantly, to be in contact with us. Whenever there is any Cheta celebration or service or whatever we have for Paul Cheta, we would like you to know. So unless we have your communicate, the com how to communicate with you, then it will be very easy for us. And I'm sure you would like to be informed you would like to know what is happening. His Eminence may like to say a few words before we start, so I will hand over the mic to him. Perhaps some of you heard about Michael Arlen, who thought that he's a Westerner writing in English and has nothing to do with other nations. But one day he found out that his surname is Kuyumjian. And he started to look for his roots. Because a tree without the roots, it worth nothing. And he was happy to find out that he is Armenian, he has strong Armenian connection 
to his father, to Armenian nation, and he wrote the book Passage to Ararat. So when you read a book written by Michael Arlen, <coughs> Jr., as far as I remember, you have to know that after losing his, I can't say his identity, but after losing his roots at maturity, he found out that and he was proud to be whatever he is. And today, it's the same opportunity for you. We don't ask you to change your character. We don't ask you to change your identity. But this is an opportunity for you to find your roots and to nourish that. As a tree will survive with the roots, you also have the opportunity to live and continue to live and to keep the legacy of Sir Khachik Paul Chater in your family life. Thank you very much to all of you who came not only to participate in the celebrations and commemorations but also to look to your roots and to find it and to nourish it by keeping it strong in your family tradition. I hope each and every one of you when goes to their countries being Canada, England or Australia, you will keep in touch with one another as well as with the communities that exist over there as Armenian communities. Thank you and God bless you. And now will the leader, I will hand over now to Liz who is the family person and she will ask the leader of each family to if they would like to say something or they would like to ask something. Yes, take the mic please. How very privileged I am to come. You know, I, I, it was just <laughs> overwhelming when I sort of got the idea that this was going to take place and when the various bits of paper started to come through that it was just overwhelming. I thought this was fantastic. And the final bit was when a big parcel arrived at my house <laughs> with six bags in it and it was slightly uh, torn at the top mm -hmm. and inside I could see Armenian church pilgrimage Sir Paul, Sir Kachip Paul Chater and uh, it, it was really uh, amazing I thought this is fantastic you know and um, well everybody that I've met I'm very pleased mm -hmm. to have met difficult to say very much more that you've all you know all that's been uh, written, uh, you know, I can't really repeat, it doesn't make a lot of sense to repeat it, but um, yeah, I mean, Sir Paul Chater was a phenomenal guy, I suppose, I have to say this, <laughs> um, and uh, very pleased to, you know, obviously be connected with him. Thanks very much, anyway. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, anyway. Fantastic. Uh, mm. Well, Camille passed away on September 2003, she's 92, she's had three falls. First one she fractured her pelvis and second one she had a hemorrhage and then the third one was a severe hemorrhage and she died through that. Uh, married for 58 years. We met in, uh, in India, in Missouri and um, we were married in New Delhi and we spent our honeymoon in Rajpur and um, Camille's mother, uh, Jose, said, why don't you go look Sir Percy Manock up here, he lives up in, in Missouri. So we met Sir Percy and spent the afternoon with him and uh, by that time he wasn't very well, I don't think, so uh, being looked after by nurses. Uh, Camille was a, a fellow fan, she used to love the water. And uh, when she was going to the beach, she, she couldn't wait to get into the water, she was first in and then she was waiting for me to come in. I used to take one shoe off and then another shoe off and I used to drag it out as long as I possibly could. I believe you see in the water is meant to sail on, not to swim in. 
<laughs> and uh, got a good life, David, our son, and uh, we've got three lovely grandchildren. Uh, we're also separated island in Melbourne, and David's in Kelsarbo, in, in uh, New South Wales. Uh, Rachel is in Melbourne, and so is I in Melbourne, so mm -hmm. we keep in touch with one another. Uh, Sandra and uh, our niece, and uh, I live up in um, Shepparton. Mm -hmm. It's all scattered all over, all over Victoria. So, lovely, uh, lovely. Thank you very thank, much, Thank Ron. you. Yes. Uh, before we continue, <laughs> before we continue, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Artyom Magatichyan. He's the charge d'affaires of the Armenian uh, embassy in, in uh, Delhi. Uh, unfortunately, he was unable to get here in time because he had hiccups on the way with planes and changing and whatever. And there he was not, not able to give the renditions of the ambassador and the deputy uh, foreign minister. So that was a sad thing, but we're so happy to see him. He's sound and he's well. Um, I think next, actually, since we've got uh, a little contingent here from Hong Kong, Jackie, would you like to um, ask any questions and then introduce uh, your, your cousins from Hong Kong? Do you have any questions for us at all? Um, my only question is, is how many children does the Armenian College have in Hong um, Kong? Uh, I think I can... I don't I think I can answer that. We have at the moment 101. But in its history, the school has never had more than 150. Because the children, are, they come from abroad. They come from, uh, originally, all this while, they've been coming from Iran and Iraq and Syria. But in these last two, three years, we've had some children coming from Armenia. So at the moment, we have three groups. Uh, children from Armenia, from Iraq, and from Iran. Thank you. That's, I meant to ask that yesterday. <laughs> um, well, my mother uh, was Caroline um, Annie Hancock. She married Walter Hancock. And her mother was um, Annie Elizabeth Matilda Jordan, so that's my Jordan connection. And my brother, mother had two brothers, Jack and George. And my cousin, is the son, the grandson of Jack Hancock, who lives and works in Hong Kong. He's a civil engineer um, working on the MTR, came in 1995, and seems to be staying here ever since. <laughs> he has, he's married Lorraine, I think, who's probably walking their son Joe around the place because he started to squeak. Um, but it was wonderful that at least one descendant of Sapor still lives and works in Hong Kong. Indeed. Yeah. We have to put him in contact with the other Armenians who are living in Hong Kong. Okay, I think at the back there's um, Liz and Peter Lumsden. Um, I should give them the opportunity to ask any questions of the family. Um, first of all, like most of you, I think I was uh, almost overwhelmed by the consideration of the amount of work and detail uh, that's gone in to making this event possible, uh, to which uh, I suppose I've had very little to do, uh, but others have uh, carried a much heavier load. Uh, I think also I'd like to say is uh, what I've learned from this place is uh, that there is this wider family, wider than just uh, tracing our roots to an Armenian connection. All of us family can trace ourselves back in some way to a man who died in the Hooghly River so many years ago. But at a more human level, there are stories which we don't know, places where others in our family have been, where we've lost contacts and lost connections. So I suppose the thing that I have learnt more than other things about this particular event is the wider sense of family. And 
uh, for that I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just explain my connection. Um, I'm Uncle Roy's nephew. My mother, Carolyn Marie Lumsden, was uh, uh, Artemis Camellia's uh, sister. Our third brother, Nicholas Camelatus, uh, has adopted a girl from Athens, Nikki, who couldn't make it. She's family, but she couldn't be here. Unfortunately, uh, my sons and my grandsons, I've got three grandsons, I've got two sons, they couldn't be here. Uh, we're the matriarchal line of the Jordans. <laughs> uh, we go back to Constance Hosanna, who uh, uh, Jordan uh, through this line, and they're, they're related to Jackie Jenkins too. So that's our part of the family tree, and Harold Jennings, and, and a few others. <laughs> Carol, I so, forgot you, didn't I? I'll come back to you. May I ask you? May I ask you a question? Yes. No one from the Jordans has mentioned Dr. Jordan who was very, very famous in Hong Kong. Now, uh, which, which one of you were connected with him? Yes, we are. Yes, please stand up, because I think that he was also a legend. Yes, well, There's so many yeah, references to him. We do know that we were connected to him, but we don't know that much about him. I did try and check his records. I think he went to Edinburgh to train as a doctor, um, but I haven't been able to track down any major more records. I'm looking at Liz over there. <laughs> when she's in the public record office here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make a note of that actually. We know he and was very yeah. well respected and, and liked and loved in Hong Kong. And we don't know whether the Jordan roads and streets were named after him or after a governor Jordan. He was a governor here in Hong Kong. And it's a question of dates. Um, it's better to believe that it was named after the doctor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll believe that. <laughs> <laughs> An animated uh, family tree <coughs> trying to find all the branches. I know most of us have been able to trace our ancestry to just maybe one branch, but the tree has many, and Paul had, Sir Paul had 12. So it'll be a nice, very big tree with lots of fruit. Now this we want to do and we want to have it uh, uh, painted in the old Armenian traditional way and then it will be laminated. One will be sent to the museum here and each member of the family will get a copy. This, uh, this will take a little time and we'll have to depend on you to communicate with Liz and then Liz will pass the information on to us and then we'll put it on parchment. Um, so really, uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, so I haven't finished going around the relatives yet. Don't worry, Jackie. Um, <laughs> okay, Carol, you, we haven't heard from you. Would you like to say a few words? Do you have any questions for us at all? Carol. Yes, I, when my father, when I was about my great niece over there's age, all I kept hearing from my father was, oh, so Paul Catchett would be this, and, and he was there, and you're related, and then the Camelotus family. They, he was always talking about that family. And, this, and I thought, who are all these people that my father kept talking about? I had no idea in those days, but as time has gone on, I have, obviously with, with the help of my brother, he's been marvelous to get the whole story of the family, which is where we are here today. Thank you. Um, I think um, Michelle and Andrew uh, Strofer, um, sorry, Michelle Chater, uh, who married Brian, um, and Andrew, can we um, have a few words from you? Do you have any questions at all? quite amazing just to be involved in this whole pilgrimage. Um, earlier this year, um, my father, who's still alive, Desmond Paul Chater, he um, received a phone call from a friend of his in England, um, an Armenian friend called Heros Avatou, 
um, who he said to him, they're going to organise a pilgrimage in Hong Kong for all the relatives of Sepulchator. And would he and my mother like to go? Um, my mother's health is not the best. Um, Dad said, look, I don't think I could go, but I think I'd like my son and my daughter to go, myself and my brother Andrew. Um, we were thrilled, you know, we thought, my goodness, I can't believe we'd be, you know, going overseas and seeing all these relatives who we um, knew that we had, but they'd seen just names to us. So then I started doing some investigating via the internet, um, the wonders of technology, <laughs> um, found Liz's website. And I thought, my goodness, I've got to email her because um, she didn't have my father's name, she had mm. Leyland. Mm. Um, I'll explain the mark a bit in a minute. And um, we, I emailed her and then the email bounced back. I thought, oh no, I'll never get in contact with her. And I finally got in contact and I said, um, I'm the, I am the great grand niece of Sir Paul Chater. And I don't know if you, know, you didn't know of my existence because apparently I don't know why, but my father's birth records were not no. in, on file. So when I told her, she emailed me back within about 30 seconds or so. <laughs> and she says, I'm so thrilled, you know. Then I started giving her information um, about the family. Um, my great-grandfather, Mark Chater, is the brother of Sir Paul Chater. Mm. So that makes me the great-grandniece and my brother the great-grandnephew, and my daughter, Olivia, the great-great-grandniece. And um, my father has been so excited, he's 77, which I suppose he could have made the trip maybe, but as I said, circumstances didn't allow. But he, he knows so much history. He went to La Martiniere College, um, and I just know that he's, he, he, I've been ringing him nearly every night, <laughs> and giving him you know, a rundown of what's been happening and all the people we've met, the Jordans, Jennings, the Goldsworthies, um, Liz, Sonia, Colleen, his eminence, so, and it's just so exciting and I just want to thank everybody for organising this and it's like so much, I, I wasn't sure what to expect but I really could not have expected any more. Oh. Thank you Michelle. I'd be very, very pleased if you could give Liz that information that your father has. Um, that yes. would be very, Absolutely. very important for us yeah. and for the family as well. I've got it. The, the nice thing about um, getting in contact with Michelle, um, apart from the, the fact that she's extremely computer literate and, uh, <laughs> and she's on the computer as much as I am, was that um, through Michelle and, uh, and her talking to her father, I was able to just get so many wonderful stories from her father Desmond, who's actually known as Jim, um, and he offered me only tremendous, unique insight into only very personal things that only family members would know. You know, nothing would ever be recorded at the PRO or at the British Library or anywhere like that. You know, the little snippets that uh, Sir Paul used to um, be very fond of your your grandmother and you know, and gave her little gifts and tried to get your grandfather to go to Hong Kong and be a jockey for him and how really stroppy and annoyed he was and, you know, and it's those tiny little stories that I want to try and include in, in the next edition or the next book or whatever it is I end up doing. Um, but Jim has been fantastic. In fact, I phoned him in Australia um, and had a long chat with him and uh, he's got a lot of memorabilia and I'm sure a lot of you also got some memorabilia, but I'm particularly grateful to Jim um, and to Michelle as well because uh, they've just been so so helpful well you've all been very helpful it's been wonderful uh, thanks Thank you. before just to escape my mind I was asked yesterday by a representative of the museum here that they would like to have the backdrop that we had at the seminar mm. we'll be using the same backdrop at the banquet and thereafter is going to the museum in Hong Kong. Good. Fantastic. Um, okay, I think uh, Andrew would like to have a word. 
by all means. Um, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, so much. it was very difficult getting very Andrew difficult here. Very difficult indeed. <laughs> and I'd like to special thanks to my sister, um, who also helped me um, make this trip. And I'd also like to express my father's regrets for not being here today, because I know he'd really love to be here for this occasion, these events. I'd also like to thank your eminences, and um, I'm very proud to be a Chater, and it's amazing just to see how many relatives I have on my father's side. Um, I was never aware that I had this many until earlier this year, and um, a special thanks to Liz for that. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to say I'm very proud to be here, and um, thank you. Um, can you pass it to, to David now, David? I didn't want you to forget me back there. Uh, I couldn't. All right, ring the bell when it's nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for uniting me with the Armenian Church, where I was baptized, where my parents were baptized, where my grandfather worked, where my great-grandfather worked, etc., etc. He doesn't uh, was, need the mic. No, he doesn't need the mic. I don't need the mic. You know, it's at theater arts that... Uh, um, I just want to thank you all because from my father, my two brothers, there are six children, which you are probably better off without. Um, <laughs> babies, you know, running and whatever. They were not able to come, but I'm glad to have turned up, and I go, they're gonna really regret it after I show them the pictures and hear the tall tales and send them the CD, which I have an extra copy of. And I do want to put out a question to, while I've got all of your attention, I'd like to commission Liz to find out the Manuk line because I'm doubly related to some of the chaders uh, that have Manuk as their last name, and maybe that could be another project for the church, <laughs> and another tree. And I think a lot of you are related to the Manuks as well, or it could be Manuk, or whatever. I think it means frog. Uh, and uh, that's all I wanted to say. I, I was very happy to meet all my cousins, third, fourth, fifth, whatever cousins, and the church, and be reunited with my church in Calcutta. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, Olivia, it would be lovely to hear from you. Well, as you all know, my name's Olivia. I'm Shell and Brian's daughter. I'm the great, great grandniece of Sir Paul Chater. One of the main reasons that I wanted to come here was to get more of a cultural experience and I knew that I'd find that out through family on this pilgrimage. But I just want to say huge thanks to, of course, all the people who organise this. And the main person I wanted to thank was my grandfather, because without him we wouldn't be here. And it's a shame he can't be here, because I know he'd enjoy this a lot. But I just wanted to thank him. And I know when we get back home he'll be like, oh, what happened, you know? But he'd always tell me stories of growing up and having all these connections and having his own zoo and stuff like that. But I just wanted to give him a huge thank you and, yeah, for sending us here. So, yeah. Good. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, and can you pass it to Olivia, can you just pass it to Julian, please? I'm uh, Julian, Paul's son, and I'm here with uh, my daughters, Joanna, Sarah and little Tony Grace at the back, who you will all have uh, seen, and, uh, and Cynthia. And um, when we first heard about this trip, um, we, <coughs> we weren't sure whether we'd be able to come all as a, a group of, of five of us or whether it would just be uh, me representing us. But when uh, we found out that all five of us would be able to come, we were absolutely uh, over the moon since Cynthia was virtually screaming, oh wow, we're going to Hong Kong, and all this... Uh, <laughs> And she, she was very enthusiastic, and uh, and Cynthia's words at the time were that uh, it's a, a once in a lifetime opportunity, and uh, and and she is and, and she hit the nail squarely on the head there because uh, this, this sort of thing um, to meet family and to travel in this way, um, you know, no, no money could ever buy, ever buy this to sort of uh, meet your roots in this way. Um, you know, before before today, uh, I'm not convinced I've ever, ever even met anyone that's uh, Ar Armenian, or and um, you know to to see uh, the in the, the church service sort of how it was done in the old country as it, as it were, and um, 
you know, we, we, we're really, you know, we, we were talking last night, and, uh, you know, it, it's really an awful lot to take in, or almost sort of uh, pinch yourself that it's real sort of thing, that, that you kind of come in, into contact with, with your roots in, in, in this way. Um, and, uh, and so I'd, I'd just like to sort of say what, what a privilege, privilege it is to be here, and, uh, and how much we've enjoyed it. And, uh, and, and thank you all for, uh, for, your, for your efforts. And, uh, and uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, I, think we've, um, I think we've done all the relatives. Unless there's any spouses who would like to... Um... Oh, Gareth, I'm so sorry. I'm fired. <laughs> Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank you all very much because we're deeply appreciative of everything you've done and we've had an absolute wonderful time here. Um, I'm the son of Carol Jennings, my uncle was Paul Jordan. Um, their father was John Chater Jordan, who went to England in the 1930s. His father was the barrister Jordan Paul Jordan, whose own father, another John Chater Jordan, was also a barrister. Um, I'm very interested in the legal uh, part of the family and I just wondered if there's been any research done on the Armenians and the law because that's something I'd like to very much research myself so I wondered if you had any pointers at all. Thanks. Uh, there's one thing I'd like to ask the family. When they got your profiles which have been printed in the brochure I found that there was a stream, like a river running through, of music. Mm. There is so much in the families that are keen on music and theatre. And I was just wondering, from which of the, the, his brothers or sisters this particular talent came from? Can someone answer that? Paul, I think. Well, Do you want I to answer that? I don't know that? for definite. But, um, uh, our great grandmother was apparently uh, a very what was her name? Uh, sorry, beg your pardon, uh, Caroline Annie Sharp, okay. and she married John Chater Jordan, and she was apparently uh, a formidable singer, and um, I, 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 that's all I particularly know. But she was well known for her singing ability and playing the piano. So it's not come from the Armenian root. But rumour has it, and this is one of the mysteries in the family, rumour has it that she was an Austrian Jewess. But whether she was or not, we do not know at this stage, but we would like to find out. She was actually born in Bombay. And um, I, I know this from the uh, uh, census in 1891. So that is perhaps one of the uh, connections musically, Sonia. Now, the second, uh, the second observation was on the intellectual side there were a lot especially those from Oxford now we just want to know this I personally would like to know being in education how from which branch did this intellectual side come from the wanting to learn the wanting to go into further study that must have been Sir Paul then <laughs> I think where it comes from it comes from being Armenian all you have to do is to look around for the number of Armenians in this world, the amount of music that, uh, and theater they've developed. The, uh, uh, I, I, like them, I liken them to the Hawaiians where everybody sings and everybody plays some sort of an instrument. I liken them to the uh, Bengalis who are very, very musically by nature. Armenians tend to be very, very musically by nature. So it doesn't come specifically from the Shater, it comes from Shater being an Armenian. Mm, thank you. Um, Rachel, Rachel, did you want to have a word? Did you want to say anything? You don't have to. No? Okay. I can't see. Followed next door, I put the musical connection, and uh, it, uh, it, it was the emendation was uh, that Sir Paul was orphaned at night, James Bach was orphaned at night. It was suffering, it was persecution. Uh, Stephen Grappelli grew up in the workhouse, and uh, so did Charlie Chaplin. 
from a very early age, they knew hardship. Uh, Carolyn Sharp, again Jewish, came from a family, a wider family, that had known what it was like to, uh, but this was before the Jewish Holocaust, but to know what it was like to so face pogroms in other countries in Europe. So the, uh, the grief gets turned into strength sometimes, and that strength comes out in music. Thank you. Um, I think we've we've um, done all the rel Cynthia, do you want to say anything? Are you sure? No. Bridget, do you want to say anything? No. Okay. Hey, what about the girl? And the voice of your child, it shows that he will be she or he. She. She will be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there any members of the committee or our guests here who would like to, or speakers, who would like to ask any questions to the family? And, um, I hope that this is a um, motivating uh, occasion that you may be more interested in your roots, seek your roots. Um, each of you has a little bit of Armenian blood in you. We're not, um, we're not chauvinists, but we're proud of our Armenianness and uh, what it means to us. Uh, we hope that you will go on and this will open a, a greater road of discovery for you all. And we thank the organizing committee for making this all possible. I think we've all learned. I've been in Armenian studies for 40 years and it took this occasion for me to really look up and learn much more about uh, uh, the Chater family and about the Indian Armenian community and I'm just uh, also very appreciative and uh, we wish you all well and we hope you connect with each other and connect with your roots. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bhutaya, Mr. Bhutaya, our very learned uh, speaker who has recently been decorated by Queen Elizabeth of England. Well, it's been wonderful listening to all your stories and it's been great of Sonia to get you all together. Uh, I was especially interested in this whole project for one reason, because for the last five or six years I've been campaigning for something which I call biography as history. And uh, this is something people really haven't looked at over the years. They tend to think of biography separately, history as separately. But the fact is, that the biographies of every single person, eminent or not eminent, has some part of history in it. And I think the stories of each one of you, if they're all put together, we are getting not only a slice of Armenian history, you're getting a slice of Indian history, and as you go on, parts of histories of Canada, Australia, UK and all. But I think, thanks to Sonia, we could really develop a major slice of Indian history from especially the economic and trade point of view to which the Armenians contributed significantly. And I think this is something which you all should start looking at as how we record this history at some point in time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bardakjan, who is hiding in the back. Mr. Bardakjan. <laughs> I didn't miss you. Amongst yourself. Uh, perhaps this is where you discovered one another. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you were in touch before. Uh, but this is a good occasion, actually, uh, for you to keep in touch and, and uh, return to uh, actually uh, to some of the memories that your perhaps your grandparents um, have passed on to you. Um, this is this has been a great occasion, uh, as I mentioned in, in my suggestions. Uh, genealogical trees would be very important. Not because people would know where they came from, not for the sake of the genealogical tree itself, but for history. Uh, the history of the region, the history of people, the contributions, whether it's Indian or Armenian history. I think uh, there is this narrow approach about genealogy that it's not really of a great, uh, as, uh, an important source of history. But I think it is, it can be done. And this is one of the fruit 
of this <coughs> conference, uh, besides many other accomplishments that this gathering uh, uh, resulted in, I think this is one of one of those uh, uh, results. So uh, I wish you well, and I wish uh, that you would continue to keep in touch and cultivate your relations, and uh, thereby contribute to your own personal stories, families, and the history of Armenians and India. And thank you again for organizing this wonderful occasion. Perhaps I have to add that uh, there is an institution in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, that institution sent people around the world to microfilm all the baptism, wedding, and funeral archives of the Armenian churches, not only in India, but all over the world. So you can find that also in their uh, website. That's um, LDS, that's family org, uh, familysearch.org, in case anyone's interested. I just, I just wanted to add maybe one more thing uh, myself, and that is uh, I made a point yesterday about uh, uh, whether the sh shaders and the uh, and the family would uh, establish a uh, a formal sort of a committee of some kind that uh, continues not only to find their roots but in terms of helping the the existing trust and so forth and with ideas and, and so forth. As, and mentioned also about the previous graduates uh, of the college organizing some sort of a, a alumni association uh, that also would contribute in the same fashion toward the uh, toward the ideas and so forth uh, that we'll need plenty of to maintain and, and continue with the work that Sonia and, and her people are doing. And lastly, uh, maybe the new generation of the shaders will put, will put together some sort of a scholarship in their own name rather than necessarily hang their hat on a Sir Paul Chater uh, only, uh, even if it is one scholarship of one student being sent to, to the college of some kind. And that'll give you some, some sort of a uh, something to rally around as well. One simple scholarship uh, to one student. Thank you. Uh, on that last note about the scholarships, I think it was mentioned yesterday that there is a special scholarship, Sir Catrick Paul Chater Scholarship, which was started a couple of years ago. And uh, so far, three students, Armenian students, have benefited. One you heard about yesterday was Henrik and his achievements. But I must mention that history is going to be made as well in a young lady who is, has gone to America on this scholarship and is, stu is studying uh, emergency uh, measures for disasters. And the latest disaster that hit the world was the tsunami. She will be the very first person who is writing a paper in the whole world. And she happens to be a young lady who is mentioned in your book your brochure, and happens to be the daughter of the gentleman who is holding the mic here, Peter Hagerpitt. Mm -hmm. At the moment, at the moment, she has come with a group of professors to Calcutta and is traveling the east to collect more information. Now, we are very, very, very proud that here is an Armenian girl who was able to do this only because of Sir Paul. The ch third child has started his, his studies in Australia. Just, two, just about a month ago, 
he went on his journey of discovery. So I thought I should give you this information, what your ancestor has done. On behalf of my daughter, I would like to thank all of you for this uh, generous, uh, uh, what shall I say, generous gift to help her proceed further. Thank you. Dear friends, this is a unique opportunity for us as church, as government of Armenia, whose representative is here, Mr. Ardyom Khachadaryan, as educational institution and headed by Mrs. Mrs. Sonia John, and family members to be here together. I will ask you in a few minutes to stand up and join your hands as some of you this morning saw on the news that Armenians in Armenia, over 160, 180,000 Armenians, hand in hand, they danced around the Mount of Arakats. I mentioned about this yesterday but today it was on the news and perhaps some of you saw that. This shows the unity, this shows the strength, and this shows the determination of a nation who suffered for centuries but survived because of their faith, they survived because of their national identity and patriotism. So we were speaking about uh, voices, musical ability, while we are holding the hand of the next person, I will lead the Lord's Prayer in Armenian and the Chater family can murmur with us and during the singing of the Lord's Prayer. Thank you again to the organizers, thank you again to the speakers, and thank you again to the family members. God bless you all.